There was so much steam, so I couldn't see much, but like I could feel the aura <laughs> of the penises. But this guy sounds a little bit like a bitch. I will have to disagree with you on that one. If somebody truly feels assaulted, it's very valid. Okay, what is up my friends? Welcome to a new episode of Uncensored, uh, my podcast, where it's much more raw, where we give you the uncensored truth from our balls into your beautiful faces. And guys, we're back in LA right now. I bought this. Isn't this the fucking cutest thing ever? I am Groot. Yeah, so. this thing's kind of weird, if I gotta be honest with you. I'm not hating on it. What do you mean weird? I it's like the cutest weird. character of like the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know there's Baby Yoda, but I truly th I think Groot is cuter than Baby Yoda. Jeff, I'm just a little bit more wholesome than you are, because we just filmed a video for, uh, for Jeff's channel as well, where I went through your phone. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I see you in the shower with another man. There are some things I cannot unsee, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've always said in my relationships, mm -hmm. this is a bromance, so it's a little different. Yeah. The phone is a no-go zone in relationships. <laughs> it's not no, I get cool, it, I get it. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I, it's, it should be based on trust. But I did see one video of you. I mean, the focus was on it and you just finished it to completion to the moon. You know, sometimes you want to give the people what they want. I've been doing OnlyFans over a year now, a year and a quarter. Sometimes you gotta deliver. People on OnlyFans often have uh, a lot of expectations, right? And it's never enough. And people always want more. I think it's a human nature kind of thing, right? So even if people demand certain things of you, people want to want you to do very sexual things, and then you show you're nude for the first time, and then people are like, "But where's the?" You know, it's like it always. You always need more. So um, how have you been dealing with that? Do you feel like do you feel that pressure? Of like always doing more or or how was the evolution? So I'm just slightly older than you and we're a little bit different positions in Twice our life. Twice my age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I first started OnlyFans, it was super nerve-wracking because you don't have this kind of content out there on the internet. Yeah. But the first nude I sent out, yeah. it was a great feeling. Yeah. Because people saw it and people complimented and they were like, oh my god, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my god, this is the best thing you've ever seen, you know? This is probably not the reaction people got there, probably like... Oh, huh, you got big balls, you know, <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> it's also one of those perspective photos too, where like the Johnson's closer to the camera. So it looks huge. hundred percent, hundred percent. No, I feel that. I mean, I was surprised on OnlyFans how authentic it felt for me to create sexy images because all my shit gets deleted. Here's a couple of photos that were taken down Instagram, Instagram. I was like, yo, what's wrong with that? This is just a beautiful photo. You know what I mean? Especially anything that's like two guys being close. We talked about this before. I truly think. If it's something that like creatively fulfills you, like for me, when I some of the nudes I shot, I'm so proud of them and I want to share them with people. And OnlyFans happens to be the only place where I can do that, you know? Right. And I said, we, I want to do a coffee table book. We just did a video where we went over the bromance calendar 2022, our favorite images. Um, I love that it's out now. You know, you guys also, if you want to, if you want to copy for yourself off the whole calendar, uh, then you can go down below, get a 30% discount only this week. I want to create a coffee table book just with like straight up nudes, but like beautiful, like beautifully shot artistic nudes that like tell a story and create a fantasy. I love that shit. Coffee yeah. table book and the calendar feel old school too. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. And I think the OnlyFans platform, by the way, it's just the, it's the only way to really scale content at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't really, you have to have some incentive to do content. People want content. Yeah. But you, I don't know, you wouldn't, I couldn't make a living off YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, all that shit. Yeah. So OnlyFans is a trusted network. You can put whatever you want on there. I think it's amazing. I go a little explicit at times. Yeah, you, I mean, and that's totally fine. I mean, whatever feels comfortable for you, you know? Well, fuck it, hey. How, how have you dealt with, okay, on a psychological level, I always think that's very interesting also for people to hear. Because we, you know that on OnlyFans there's a stigma, right? It's like very stigmatized and some people, I mean, we have a, a friend of mine, like he's a doctor, right? And he doesn't even want to be in any way of shape or form associated with it uh, because of his professional career. And, uh, you know, obviously we don't have careers as like doctors or lawyers or any traditional field. But still there's judgment. How have you been dealing with that? Like, has there been judgment from like friends or family or has that been an issue for you? Or were you just like, fuck it? 
Definitely all of the all of the above. Friends, family, relationships. Okay. Um, it can be a little iffy on the relationships, but yeah, we kind of talked about this with the bromance calendar. I'm focused on my bromos at the moment. Mm -hmm. My bromos, they take me places in life. Look, I'm yeah. here with you. You're watching my butthole videos. <laughs> that's that's what that's what love's about, you know? And yeah. we, we do whatever content we want to do. We're having a blast. We're going places. We're doing things. And just my relationships. So I'm that's a side note to me at the moment. Okay, I the see. The family is a little tougher to deal with. Yeah. They and want you to have that perfect image, but hey, mom and dad, <laughs> look at me. You think this was gonna be a perfect image? Come on now. <laughs> you yeah, knew that was gonna yeah. end soon. Have you always been a little bit of a rebellious type? Yeah. Yeah. So have you felt that pressure? Because for me, for example, like when I grew up, I um I did pretty well in school, so it was clear to everybody in my family in school that I was gonna go the academic route. You know, people expect me to um, study like business and chemistry and do all these things, right? But I always felt like I wanted to do something else and express myself creatively. And I, I love doing edgy and provocative shit. That's part of like really what I want to do. I want to also, with everything I do, there's part of me that also wants to provoke all the people that are so set on their beliefs and their conservative like structures they've been growing up around. And I just want to break all that shit by doing provocative stuff. However, it took me a while to get past the expectations of other people. You know, so uh, I started modeling and everybody was telling me, Mario, you can't do that. You, you have such a good like career academically in front of you. You can't just do modeling and experience life. And I was like, yo, the experience is more valuable to me than any degree right now. Um, so what, how was that for you? What was your life ex like expectancy? <laughs> Not long. <laughs> what was your expected life path when you were younger? Like, what were you going to do before you started selling your bottle on OnlyFans? <laughs> Well, so I, my baseball career, I went to college, started playing baseball. That I was, that dream ended pretty quickly. Yeah. And my parents fully supported me going into modeling, moving out to Los Angeles. Okay. They still support me with that. And they even support me today with exclusive content. I just think, you know, parents, obviously, they would prefer you not to be naked. I'm guessing, right? Sure, I yeah. I don't think they think much of it that I am. Yeah. But they probably prefer it not to be. And then you start yeah. talking about little kids running around, nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. And maybe the future society is a little more open and naked. But at the moment, yeah, it's not there. And I wonder if that's going to happen truly. Because, I mean, think about the evolution of uh, content in general, right? Show anybody in the 1960s WAP. Like wet ass pussy, you know, that music video, right. holy shit. Right. I mean, truly, that music video would be, uh, like, that would be porn back then, truly, right? So it's definitely evolved a lot. So I wonder, like, now it's becoming more mainstream, and you talked about this. Um, we went through your phone, you showed me this photo of this male model, right? I think you can say his name, Michael Yeager, right? Yeah. He did, like, big campaigns as a male model, and he has an OnlyFans doing very explicit content. So do you think that's just going to become the new norm? I think so because Michael Jurger Jaeger, I'm not sure what his name is, but he's like the it model in America right now. He's super young, he's like 22 or 23. Yeah. Has a super hot girlfriend. They're killing it. They moved to Nashville, by the way, which is crazy. Okay. Yeah. And he just got the Dolce and Gabbana campaign. So whoever is in charge of Dolce and Gabbana, they have to have seen his OnlyFans. It's yeah. free to subscribe to it. Yeah. And they don't care. They're like, you know what? This guy's doing his thing. Hey, maybe it edges towards sexy, the content. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But so what? I think that they're already adapting to the future. Yeah. But uh, That's so a very interesting point, yeah. I mean, I think there's some brands, you know, like uh, on Disney, right? Or like very family-friendly channels like ABC. Really mainstream stuff that has like an older audience. I think they will care. And that's the number one thing I always get, you know, when I talk to... Uh, other models or people like they asked me about OnlyFans is like, hey, are you not afraid that the stigma is going to prevent you from doing other stuff? I'm like, okay, I do stand up comedy. That's one of my main things. As a stand up comedian, truly, I don't think that it matters. It almost like adds. And I love that now it's coming to the point where we can kind of embrace whatever we do. I mean, my friend's a stand up comedian. He's also a porn star and he talks about the adult entertainment industry in a stand-up set and it's just a unique thing he does and I love that there's less judgment around that. Mind you, we're in Los Angeles, right? So it might look different if you go to like Arkansas or Wisconsin. 
But um, yeah, well, you know I, I just find that interesting. Yeah. What also happens when you have any sort of centralized industry, so like traditional modeling, yeah, it just pro it makes for dull, boring content. If you have only modeling <laughs> yeah. that goes through agencies and you only do shit for the brands, yeah, you have dull, boring shit. Exactly. But when you give it like to the people and they can do their own art, their own content, totally. Maybe it skews sexy. I don't know, but it's much. It's just cooler. It's dope. And even like uh, whatever with the, with your career choice in the entertainment industry specifically. I truly think it's all moving towards decentralized platforms, right? I think the news channels of the future are not going to be on CNN and BBC. I think the news channel of the future are going to be YouTube shows. The shows, late night shows of the future are going to be podcasts. It's already shifting so much. So because it's becoming more decentralized, it's great because it had just much, there's much more freedom, you know? And of course, brands will always play into it, like my YouTube channel. By the way, this YouTube channel right here, Uncensored, we talk about things. I swear to God, this video is going to be demonetized as well. All my videos, like the one I talked about modeling last week, I would say 60% of my podcasts specifically are demonetized, just because you talk about controversial stuff. And that's why I love that it's moving more towards doing your own thing, selling your own stuff, instead of depending so much on like advertisers and these mainstream old structures of how media worked. <clears throat> and why yeah. would you even do shit for the brand? This is a conversation I have with a lot of people. Why would you even do shit for the brands? You talk about inequality. All they pay are the fucking top 0.1% and nobody else gets shit. I was talking to you about Paula in Spain. Yeah. She was doing eight grand a month with uh Bang. With Bang. Yeah. Cut it down to three and a half. I said, your next one, they're gonna try to get you for a thousand. Yeah. That's yeah. the future when you when you're dealing with brands. I don't even know why you would Yeah. I mean, I I would say one brand deal I did now, I've, I've talked openly about this, like my YouTube channel, um, I, I don't make as, as enough money, especially everything being demonetized, uh, to really live a life in Los Angeles and live the lifestyle, like traveling and creating all the content I want to create. So it's way, <coughs> yeah, it's some strong shit, man. That tea, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I recently did one brand deal on YouTube with you together, where we reviewed sex toys from Adam and Eve. Uh, by the way, you video, YouTube video obviously age restricted, but that was fun, you know? I, I love just like, if it's a brand that's like fun and it creates some fun content, it's authentic and it's like authentic for our brand, I just love, you know, pushing boundaries a little bit, like trying adult toys, I've never done that before, you know? Um, then I'll do it, but I won't do anything that's like, just like feels iffy. I've had so many skincare brands that I don't even know about or support. Like they send me so much stuff and I just never want to do a sponsorship because it felt like I want to do my own thing. Like I love selling the bromance calendar. I make way less money with this than like I could with other stuff, but it's just something, you know, it's more fulfilling that way. Yeah. The thing about everybody that wants to go for traditional modeling, I mean, it's not all about money, but what I don't get the incentive like you're, you're not gonna make any money probably well yeah exactly Michael that's Yergert I mean but. that's the that's yeah and, and you're not gonna make money a long term especially that's the thing about modeling you know people first of all there's such a screwed imagination and expectation what people have about being a model because you see the top percentile like when you look at male models you think like Shauna Pry and David Ganey these big models that made it that is less than one percent of all models I'm telling you right now out of all the Milan Fashion Week models that go to Fashion Week each year to book some runway shows, I'm telling you that over 60, 60, I would say three quarters of them make no money. They lose money by going to Fashion Week. And that's a fact, you know, I know, I mean, just from knowing my friends and stuff and being at my mall apartment, there was all, there were 10 guys in the mall apartment, maybe three of them did like, more than two shows where they actually made a little bit of money, but it's all like, it's, and it's that the thing that's always in the media, it's so glamorized, but behind the scenes, you've got a bunch of broke models that are desperate for jobs, that are willing to literally suck dick to get modeling jobs, you know, yeah. to get ahead. There's a lot of pressure, power structure. So I'm all for whenever any industry gets kind of decentralized because it takes the power away from, um, you know, like in, in, in adult entertainment, it takes power away from studios. In modeling, it takes the power away. If like people do their own thing, like influencers, it takes the power away from those old modeling agents or these power dynamics where there's so much sexual harassment going on. I love when that happens, you know? There's like two well, powers of the people. <clears throat> yeah. That photo that I showed you of Michael, I showed that to a girl I know. And there's two views when you see that. She sees that and like, oh my God, 
why would he go on OnlyFans? He's doing so well in his career. Mm -hmm. And when I see it, I'm like, he gets it. Yeah. You know, he, he yeah. understands that these brands aren't going to be there long term. They can't compare to the scaling online. Yeah. And I don't know, but there is a large, like, faction of society that is, like... Totally. And I think at the end of the day, with all that stuff, you just got to do whatever feels comfortable to you, you know? And if it feels really inauthentic and it feels like you don't... I, I'm a person I've always loved, and I'll be honest, I always loved sharing stuff and sexy images because I was a model, you know? So part of me also likes, of course, the, the attention, the validation. It's a big part of everything you do online. I'm sure every single social media creator, part of it is motivated by feeling validated, you know, sharing your art and being validated for it. And I've always loved sharing sexy imagery. It's been something that's just felt very authentic to me. So that's why it's great for me. But if somebody doesn't feel that way, then I think they shouldn't push it, right? So I see both sides. If it feels really, you just got to ask yourself if you're not doing it or doing it because of the pressures of society and the judgment you're afraid of, like the opinions of other people, or if it's something you genuinely just don't want to do, you know? And I see both sides, you know, I think. People got to figure it out, yeah. I told you what my dad said last year. I called my parents. I was like, hey, I just want you to know I'm thinking about putting a nude on OnlyFans. Okay, yeah. My dad says... Make sure your dick looks good. So. <laughs> he says, I don't... You're representing my, cam my family. <laughs> I don't think he's too gifted of that. <laughs> but he says, I don't care if you post a nude online, but don't you dare vote for Trump. Wow. That's what he said to me. I was like, that's what are you okay. talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Voting? I'm not voting. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that says a lot about your dad. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Wow. I remember to this day. Damn. I did not vote for Trump. In the, in most, okay, and then I think the other family would be like, uh, make sure you vote for Trump and don't post that <laughs> fucking nude, you know? Exactly. <laughs> That'd be exactly. the typical, like, Trump family, I'm, I'm assuming. Damn, son. I didn't vote for Biden either, I just want to be clear. I didn't vote for either one of them. Okay, okay. I don't want to take sides. <clears throat> I voted for Angela Kam karrenbauer in the German election. I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't even vote in Germany anymore, truly. Like, I'm like a lost citizen, truly, because I'm not a German resident anymore. That's why I couldn't vote in the German election that just happened in September that nobody knows about in America. Because America is all about just America. Nobody, they don't like <laughs> report about what's happening in Europe. You know, like Germany, one of the biggest like economies in the world. No, 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 let's not talk ever about presidential election in America. America a year before it starts like TV everything you know Germany like <laughs> Angela Merkel leaves office nobody even knows about it do you know who, who's become the new chancellor of Germany I do not. nobody knows nobody knows, nobody <laughs> nobody knows. knows. <laughs> I think it's gonna be Olaf Scholz but yeah no, I'm just like yeah you, you yeah. guys just start wars over there we just start we just start wars <laughs> that's, your joke. that's all we do <laughs> every damn week okay but next up i want to do something more topical in this channel because we're worldly educated people and i read uh, an article um on metro weekly that uh is talking about a lawsuit by straight men that sues a gym for not expelling clients who masturbated in the steam room so i'm gonna read some of this a straight man is suing a gym in manhattan over over fears that he could have become a potential victim of sexual assault after fellow gym goers began masturbating and looking at him while in the steam room. And uh, when I read this, I thought of you, Jeff Kasser, because I know you love your steam room. And I've said this before, you know, there's a lot of places in the world, right? There's a lot of very gay friendly places. We happen to live in a very gay friendly neighborhood. You know, we went to West Hollywood, filmed a social experiment last week, asking strangers for dares. It was wonderful. People are very open and I love that energy of the gay community. Out of all the places in the world, the gayest place in the entire universe is the Crunch Gym in West Hollywood. <laughs> And Jeff is a member. <laughs> so after I read this article about this guy um, explaining how he was being masturbated to, which actually I think classifies as sexual assault, I want to just pass the mic on to you and uh, talk to you about your experience uh, being a member at Crunch Gym in West Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah, I've told you I joined there specifically for the sauna and steam room. Plus, it's definitely an upgrade over LA Fitness and 24-Hour Fitness. Those are trash. Yeah, yeah. Don't fuck with those. Yeah. Um, and I learned pretty recently that they had to shut down the steam room for a month due to inappropriate behavior, which okay. I was told was jerking off. They don't do that in the sauna. I have been in the steam room, and I haven't seen anything. Okay. And here's my opinion about it, okay? Okay. I, I'm just not crazy about it. Now, I want to be open <laughs> to the world, so I yeah. would never be a little bitch and go tattletale on somebody, okay? Yeah. I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah. It just seems a little, like, hygienically speaking. I get that. Yeah, I, I don't totally. want...
in my toes without volunteering for that. Yeah. You yeah. know? And yeah. I it feels a little inconsiderate. But yeah. hey, if this is what they want to do in there, I mean, who am I to come change the whole yeah, I mean, you're a very open guy, you know, I think other people would be more offended by it, and it's no joke, I mean, it's clear that the, okay, here's the thing, the, besides from even the steam room, the sexual energy at that gym is pretty intense. The, there's only one gym I went to was in Palm Springs called Go World Gym or something, and that's, it's only bare, so it's like older gay men, and the energy there is like, once you walk in, it's just like, <laughs> It's like, you know, you know, it's like in Star Wars when they walk into the bar, you know, and you're like an outsider and everybody's like silent and they all look at you. It's just like, it's intense, you know, so I'm like trying to do my workout, you know. And I'm also, by the way, when I work out, you know what I'm wearing? I'm wearing the shortest, I'm going to picture you, I'm wearing the shortest European soccer shorts and I've got long legs. So I, I'm, I'm very flamboyant looking when I work out. I'm fully True. aware of that. And I don't wear much because it's a workout, you know what I mean? And uh, when I work out there though, I'm like, Try not to make eye contact because I want, I'm really there to work out, guys. You know what I mean? But once you make eye contact with somebody for longer than a second and a half, it's almost like you're fully consenting to anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You know. Second and a half. That's good. All. So how do you work out? You just go there and you just like. The working out is relatively chill, but you know what? Okay. It reminds me a bit of uh, what was the the gay festival we went to? Oh, um, just, Utopia. Just yeah. Just piercing holes through. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's intense now. Every Everybody's on drugs there, so I get it. Mm, yeah. But yeah, back to crunch. I just... It just feels like when you enter the gym, it's almost like in Harry Potter. You know Harry Potter, you know the snake thing that looks at you and it freezes you to death. And you can't make eye contact with it. So I'm literally a crunch. I'm like literally trying to like, I'm like walking there. I'm like, you know, trying not to make eye contact with anybody, you know? Especially in the steam room. Because once you're in the steam room, the rules have, the rules change, man. And uh, yeah. How many times do you get hit on though in, this, in, the, in the gym after like, you know, working out or something? It's it's a good bit in the locker room. Yeah, but yeah. I don't. You know, I like talking to anybody. There's a guy. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, no, I love, I met some cool people there as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. The guy in there today, I think he's friends with Travis Bryant. He comes up. He teaches a cycling class. Yeah. And he's talking to me. You know, we're both like half naked, and it's cool. You know, I didn't necessarily want to talk to him, but I feel good after it happens. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you because you asked me about the steam room. Yeah. I just want to go on the record. I would never be a bitch and go tattle on someone. Okay. I'm not crazy about it, hygienically speaking. Well, okay. Would you feel offended, though? Because this guy, I'm going to read you this, uh, his experience, right? The okay. steam clears, and I look across from you. This gentleman, sitting pretty close, his towel is open, his legs are spread, and he's looking right at me. And the guy next to him was rubbing the man's inner thigh. He's looking right at me, his towel off, and he's masturbating. This guy began to panic when he saw a third man in the steam room who was also staring at him and masturbating. I thought, no escape, I'm going to be sexually assaulted so he then reported the incident to the front desk and they didn't do anything about it. he was like oh yeah just another you know it's a problem it's just something we deal with not another one you know but they uh, didn't really do anything about that so if that happened to you would you feel assaulted like what would be picture that like would you feel flattered that he's jerking off to you or would you feel really uh, would that make you feel really uncomfortable um I would probably be a little flattered to be honest. With you. Okay. <laughs> See, I mean, yeah, everybody. You know? Yeah. That's why I'm kind of thinking, like, I don't know all the information, but this guy sounds a little bit like a bitch. I will have to disagree with you on that one. Okay. Because no matter what you feel and no matter what makes you feel uncomfortable or not, I mean, you're a very open guy, which I love about you. And I think I'm the same way. There's not. And that's probably because we both have been models. Like, we've been through this guy, one guy, like, at a speedo shoot pulled your weenie out, right? Like, Things happen that made you very open and not easily offended by things, which I think is a great quality, having that openness. But if somebody truly feels assaulted, it's very valid. And that's like their experience and that matters, right? So I truly believe if a lot of people, if they see that, somebody doing that to them, it can fuck them up. Okay. Like they feel sexually assaulted. And, uh, and I think that's not cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if, if you feel a vibe and you really have a connection with somebody and you're doing something daring in public, that's one thing and I kind of understand that. But jerking off to a stranger who you don't know, that's not about your own like thrill or anything. That's just selfish because it can really fuck somebody up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we're also yeah. taking him for his word at the moment. Yeah. 
Um, well, this this brings about a good question of what defines sexual assault. I'm glad you asked because I'm a well prepared podcast host, right? So I looked up the definition of sexual assault on Wikipedia, and it says sexual assault is an act in which one intentionally sexually touches another person without that person's consent or coerces or physically forces the person to engage in a sexual act against their will. So I I don't know if assault I don't know if that counts. I don't know because it says you engage in the sexual act. I mean, is being masturbated to a sexual act? I, th I mean, I do think if it really, it's it's not so much about the definition and like, because everybody has different boundaries. You know, you might, something might really upset you and cross your boundaries like very different. You know, some people might feel assaulted just when somebody's giving them a massage or touching them in public, right? But I would count this person doing that to that other person. I would say that's sexual assault because of how somebody can have similar emotional and like um you know repercussions and it can it can affect the victim and that's up to them what their you know what their boundaries are in that sense yeah let me give you a little pushback and get mm -hmm. your opinion yeah well i think that maybe that sexual assault is defining it criminally yeah and i don't think i saw that it was a criminal investigation yeah, 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 yeah. so he's trying to sue and yeah. i don't know that just because somebody feels a certain way that that's a valid point yeah. There's a lot of people on homeless, I mean, a lot of people on Hollywood Boulevard that are homeless that yeah. feel different things that might not be valid. Yes. It doesn't mean their perspective is trash or that their opinion should just be thrown out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know that just because you <clears throat> feel a certain way that that means that is cemented as valid. You yeah. Yourself, you know I mean? But I think... Now, hold on, let me ask you this. Yeah. He says he felt like he was trapped in there. Well, did you actually... I'm just questioning. Did you physically get up and try to walk out? Because maybe you felt it's, it's, a certain but it's, way. But it's not about that. You shouldn't, I mean, just the fact that you're faced with that situation in a steam room, it's like, I get what you mean, right? If somebody, uh, like, whatever, it's it's up to perspective, right? If somebody hits you, hits it to you at a club and hits you with like a weird pickup line, some people might be super offended, some people might just laugh it off, and some people just might be more sensitive, you know? I get that. But truly, somebody at a steam room looking at you, pulling their winky out, and like touching themselves while looking at you. Not cool. I think truly she has a point. And I think he's not suing uh, the person who jerked off to him. It's so weird. Um, he's suing the gym for not enforcing its policies. Because obviously it's illegal, right? I mean, if it's not, unless you're, at a, unless you're in Berlin at a techno club, that shit generally does not fly, you know what I'm saying? What I see your point though is that in America especially, a lot of times when people sue, it's also there's a motivation which is, you know, money. And that's the right. fucked up thing about America a little bit, a little bit, because the the amounts that you can sue for, it's just, it blows my fucking mind. Like the the legal industry in America is a bit, it's a huge industry. And in Germany, not that much lawyers don't make that much money. So there's not that pressure of like, you, assuming somebody in Germany is like, you know, really, there's no financial incentive really you know to that it's more like truly if something is you know when went wrong and you figure it out but there's not like these crazy amounts and that's always tough you know what somebody's intention with that you know and so for me let me just be clear i don't go in the steam room now because that's what happens i only do the sauna so okay. i don't think it's cool but i'm saying specifically for this guy yeah I just don't know if I see that as assault because you feel a certain way. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's any sort of legal definition that would ever say that you feel something, that that should be a valid perspective. Yeah. It's not throwing out the door. It doesn't mean you throw it out the door. But yeah, I'm saying yeah, yeah. feeling is not factual. It's of so course, subjective. Of course, it's very subjective. But I think it's it's not subjective if somebody looks at you and jerks off to you. I sure. think that's not yeah. very subjective. And I think we can all kind of get behind that that's like not the common practice that just be like, oh yeah, the guy, you know, don't be such a little, you know what I mean? I, I can see how that can, I, it wouldn't affect me, honestly. If I picture myself, I'd be like, that's fucking weird. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose it to be that way, but I'm also, I'm so fucking open. It's crazy, actually. Dude, I went to Berlin uh, in uh, in the summer on a Euro trip and I saw the things I saw at a club in Berlin. I mean, straight up in the open, like Berlin is a crazy kinky place and I lived there and I was a model. So I'm very open. So I see that your point, actually, if somebody was like, you know, like touching yourself while looking at me, I'd be like, oh, 
how you know he must find me very attractive but it's also fucking creepy think of crunch west hollywood yeah. is it really should i really go to the front desk and try to change the entire culture of this place i've been there two months you know if i have i'm in america i can walk out and leave i can maybe ask for my money back or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that but i'm saying this has got it's got some question marks behind well it. maybe it's not just about like you right it's not just about okay i'm feeling comfortable so i should leave no it's also about like protecting other people from feeling that way in the future you know because truly like we're very open but picture somebody who really gets kind of it fucks him up you know and that's something is something i was struggling with when i was a model right i also felt like a lot of photographers that were like being inappropriate and i felt like maybe i should like really call them out publicly too to so they can't do it to other people that's really something i was struggling with because i had this one instance where a uh, new york times came up to me with an article about a specific photographer and i declined even though i shot with him because i felt like first of all what happened with me and him it was not that bad and i actually liked him as a person but i can see how he makes other people feel uncomfortable and then also like i didn't want to cause a big scene and don't i didn't want to be that model who's like exposing people because fucking industry is like if you are known as the people who calls out photographers, photographers are gonna think twice about shooting you and the fashion industry is so much, there's so much press to shoot with these big photographers that I decided not to. But I could see the point of like, hmm, maybe I should have said something so that an 18 year old model who walks in the door and shoots with this guy does not get treated the way I was treated. Cause I'm older, you're way older. <laughs> but like we're like, I feel like we're secure in ourselves in our sexuality and where we've landed. But if I think back when I was 18 years old, I was not secure and I just don't want a young model or anybody to go through that. So I see that point of like saying something for the sake of those people who might feel insecure or like affected by it in the future, you know? And yeah. what about, and, and just to be clear again, I already said, I don't want anybody jerking off next to me. Yeah, yeah. I, don't even, I don't do the steam room specifically because of that. Yeah, so, yeah. So I agree. But what about, what if the culture there is that? Like, what if there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of members oh, yeah, absolutely. that are under the impression that this is kind of a gay bathhouse kind of No, no, type no. Thing? 100%, 100%. And there is gay bathhouses. And I think then it should be clearly communicated so that people have a clear expectation of what they're walking into. Because I can tell you my experience real quick when I was in Paris. Swear to God. I haven't even posted that vlog. Maybe I'm going to make a YouTube video about this. Yo, I, I go to Paris and I want to go to a gym. And I was near the Louvre. So I literally type in gym, G-Y-M, literally all I did. The first thing that popped up, I forgot what it's called. I think it was called Louvre Gym or something. And it was literally like a five minute walk from the Louvre next to my hotel where I was staying at. Went to the gym and it said, uh, gay, or it, I don't know, it said something like gym, bathhouse, gay friendly. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been to Crunch in West Hollywood, it was fine. Bro. <laughs> I go there and I almost went there to like, okay, I want to investigate. I want to see what the culture is. Because also, again, I'm very open dude. So I'm, I, I don't think any, anything can face me. That's what I thought. <laughs> Walk into place. First, it was a regular, I mean, it was a gym on the first floor, right? A regular gym. Uh, I did my workout, paid the guy, but like, it was only men, clearly, right? It was a, I could feel like the energy was a little strange. It was, you know, a little intense. And um, all these French dudes just, uh, you know, like being, like just working out, right? And then I knew that downstairs was like the sauna and the shower area. <clears throat> so I worked out really hard, <laughs> get a really good workout in and um, walked down there. It wasn't clearly communicated. Maybe also my French was not good enough, but all the, on the walls also, all I could see were all these like, like billboards and posters of like gay events and like this this butt plug and this like really like ads that really showed, okay, this is a very like, you know, like gay, friend, like sexually gay friendly environment. It's fully dark, right? And you see like little shadows of people. And it's like this, these people are just like naked, just walking past, you know? And the first room I walked into, <laughs> there's, first of all, it's a, it's a machine on the wall. It's like a, a gumball machine for lube and condoms. Legitimately. That was the first thing I saw. And I was like, okay, that's okay. You know, I ain't, I'm not sure like Holmes, right? But I kind of get what this is about here, you know? Yeah. And then um, and then I walk into the first room. It's like these little side rooms. And it's literally, it's almost like in a club you have dark rooms. It's literally a black room. All there is is like a, almost like a massage chair kind of thing. And another loop thing on the wall. Um, and um, and t t t tissues to like sanitize after. So these are specifically designed just to bang. Yeah. 
Wow. So I walked around there and um, that's I. That's not cool. And I uh, no, I mean that's that is cool because like that's specifically the purpose of but that. But it's a gym. It's a gym, but also a bathhouse. So like it's nobody goes there. Like if they like that's the main purpose why people go there because okay. they right. want to hook up with people, right? So um, and then I walked around. I've heard a lot. I actually like randomly the, the same day I went there on YouTube. I had a YouTube recommend recommended video that popped up of this dude talking about his gay bathhouse stories or something. So I kind of knew that this was a thing in the gay community. Um, so I walked. I walked more. And there's also a steam room, and I walked in. It's just like yo, there was so much steam, so I couldn't see much, but like I could feel the aura <laughs> of the penises. Like I felt like I, felt, <laughs> I just walked in. I just you know did you just feel the white the weight of like just hard cocks around you, <laughs> you know? Extra um, steamy in there. Yeah. So that was my experience. And the funny thing is, like I just I, I'm the, I'm the most innocent person. So I'm just like I'm there. I'm like a little uncomfortable, you know, just taking a shower, la 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 la, you know. And then um, I uh, I saw this dude, and uh, I just asked him about his experience here. And I even like filmed it, I think. I wanted to make a YouTube video about it. And I just talked to the dude, he was from Brazil, and he was talking to me about like, oh, this is also new to Paris, and speak French that well. So we talked some Spanish, talked some French, um, talked about his experience, and said, oh yeah, yeah. You, he said, you're very attractive. And I just blushed, and I didn't know what to say, because I felt like anything I give this guy, it's gonna lead to butt sex. You know, I was like, <laughs> what? Um, and uh, yeah, and then I just had a conversation with the dude, you know, just walking around talking about Europe and the difference between Europe and, and Brazil where he's from. And then um, I get dressed very quick, showered and left. Yeah. <clears throat> but that was, sorry for the long thing, but that was my experience at a gay bathhouse in um, Paris. And yeah, that was, it, it was, that's different because the, uh, the crunch gym, people go to crunch, right? They don't necessarily know what's up, right? But that place is specifically designed for that. You know, it's almost like, you go to a gangbang party in Berlin. You expect to see that. If you walk into like a regular gym and you just want to work out and then really sexual stuff happen, it might feel, make you feel a little uncomfortable. You know? So. you know, I think you do bring up a good point as far as uh, speaking up so it doesn't happen to someone else. And I actually hadn't thought about that a lot. That does make a lot of sense because yeah. I'm the type of person that I don't want to ruin someone's future. I see that because, too. Because people thought, are fucked up. I'm fucked up. Yeah. People have demons, and who knows what somebody's fucking dealt with. People are weird. And yeah. Not necessarily evil. Just yeah. Fucking no, I see weird. that. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Uh, I've also had a problem with like calling photographers out for that reason because I was like, you know, that person. I see. I mean, and I had to work a lot on that because for a long time, with all the like stuff that happened to me as a model, where people treated me like shit and used their power, a lot of times I was like, oh, it's my fault. You know, I'm like. I, I should just be, you know, I shouldn't have been as open and I'm innocent. I, I kind of, you know, provoked that situation to happen. But fuck that. No, no, no. These people are assholes if they've abused their power like that. But I still, and that's something I really f felt for myself. I don't feel hatred towards anybody. Like even the people who have like, I mean, I've been sexually assaulted. The person who did that, I look at them and I'm like, they've, they're troubled, right? So I, I, I have a, and it's fucked up because I can see how, what they did, right? But on a certain weird level, psychologically, I have some level of empathy even, where I wouldn't want to ruin their career. So I cannot, I can never relate to hatred towards somebody. That's also something, that's a weird thing. I talk to many people about this. That's maybe a unique thing about me. I, I don't hate anybody. I can't say, like some people get so like, they hate Donald Trump with all their passion. I can say a lot of bad things in an objective look at the situation, but I, the, the feeling of hate, I can't relate. It's a rhyme right there, right there for you. <laughs> Truly, and I feel sometimes yeah. like, what's the purpose of hate, you know? Um, I, I could never relate to that so much, so it's always hard for me also to really call people out. Because um, some people, that's all they do, you know, Barrett Paul on Instagram, like that's all they do, is like they wanna actually, they get something from like really hating people and like, and that's cancel culture, a lot of people, but yeah, I just, you know, I feel, I feel that now. Yeah. In today's world is different because, you know, for example, when I started modeling 10 years ago, you didn't have outlets to speak up yeah you just yeah. really didn't but today you do so hopefully there's less and less of that yeah yeah um, whoa here upper east siders sues midtown gym for hazardous amounts of sperm hazardous amounts oh, of sperm what are you talking about? wow oh my God, no. how much sperm does it have to be so it's hazardous okay can you imagine Dude, the scenario no. you know when somebody slips and like breaks their neck because they slipped on <laughs> 
That's the reality that we live in right now. Jesus Christ, dude. And that's the main thing with me is the hy hygiene around the sperm. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see that. Like, yeah, maybe they, if they wore a condom, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. All right, guys. Um, it's a very controversial topic. I'm glad we can have this uncensored conversation. This fucking podcast might even get age restricted because of that, but fuck it. Because I want to have these conversations here. Um, comment below what you think. I always love reading your comments, and uh, let's have a discussion about that because I can see both sides. And let me know what your experience is at a, at a steam room if you've been before, and <laughs> what your uh, thoughts are on the lawsuit. Um, yeah. Yeah, guys. Just so you know, again, this is an open conversation. Uh, I was playing devil's advocate a little bit. Yeah, no, I love prove that. Me right, love prove it, yeah. me wrong, whatever yeah. it is. I just yeah. want to have a, a discussion. Yeah, I love that. Every opinion matters, you know. Yeah, I feel every, yeah. my opinion matters, so that's valid. It is valid. <laughs> All right, guys. Fucking love you. Subscribe to the channel for more uncensored conversation every single week. My heart. Where's my heart? I'll literally request for you to do it, but I'm gonna need to see you like completely naked for the shoot. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be in with like two other guys. And that's the one thing that frustrated me about modeling too, was that I was never in control.